And here we go. Now, again, listen, all right, four, we finished question 13. Now we're on question 14. So everybody take a look at that. All right, tell me, what do we have? And that's exactly correct. So we have two shapes, all right? So volume number one, all right? Volume number one, all right, is going to be our rectangular prism, which again, I want everybody to write down is simply the area of the base times the height. Area of the base times the height. Now you're supposed to look and you're supposed to see this right here. It's not a very good drawing, but let's do a better job. So here we go. That right there is going to be our base. All right, so that shape right there is the area of the base. Now, the reason why I'm drawing this out here for you is because I'm trying to show you again that I can move this straight up here and that will be that will look like that. All right, so to me, visually, that's kind of helpful. All right, so you can see the area of the base. And what is the base area? 30 times nine. No, you're right, it does not matter. But we're gonna do 30 times nine. And then this is the height. So what is the height of that prism? Yeah, I like it. The height is seven. So 30 times nine times seven. Somebody calculate that for me. How much? 1,890. Anybody else get that? Yeah. Yards cubed. Okay. Now I need someone. All right. The second volume. All right, the second volume is, we already said, is a trapezoidal prism. So everyone, if you don't mind, I feel like we should sketch out for me that trapezoid, all right? Because again, as we're talking about it right here, that right there, can be moved to the back. That is considered the base. All right, come on, Jackson. This is what I was talking about now. All right, so I need someone to remind me what the area of a trapezoid is. Who remembers that formula? Come on, tell me. And then, what'd she forget? What was it? Not one third, one half, right? The area of a trapezoid is the average of the bases, all right, times the height, times capital H. All right, so now everybody's coming down. V2 is equal to one half. Ashley, what are the two bases? You are amazing, 30 plus 19. And what's the height of the trapezoid? The 10, that is correct. Now you have to tell me the height of the trapezoid, the prism is what? That is correct. All right, so once again, this is the height right here. This distance right here is the height of the prism the distance between the two bases. So now please practice typing that in and tell me what that volume two is. What did somebody say? No, I don't think so. 
1,740. Eddie says 1,740. Anybody else get that? 30 plus 19 divided by 2 times 10 times 9. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's see again. I'm totally fine with that. All right, so again, everybody type in 30 plus 19 on your calculator. Let's just do that first. I don't want to do the parentheses. If you want to do the parentheses, you can. Then divide it by 2 times 10 times 9. What is that? 2, what? No, 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 guys. Okay, listen, I'm having some trouble here, guys. Everybody clear your calculator out. Let's go. We need to get this right. Now, because everybody has kind of the same calculator, listen to me. I want everybody to do this, just starting out. Do the fraction one half, then open up parentheses. Or I'm sorry, I think you have to hit one half times, open parentheses, 30 plus 19, close parentheses, times 10 times nine. And what is it again? All right. Now, guys, I'm not having a calculator, so you're supposed to tell me. Is everybody agreeing with that? Yeah. All right. So now, what would be the total volume? What would I do now? Yes, you would add this, and you would add this. So the volume is equal to all together. Help me. Four thousand what? Nine Four zero nine five yards cubed. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, going on to the next one. All right, I appreciate you guys. Now, what shapes do we have for number 15? Uh, a, cube. a cube and a triangle. Uh-oh, no, I don't see. What kind of pyramid? Square pyramid. We know it's a square pyramid because the base is a square. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Come on now. Everybody make sure you're looking at this. This right here is the square that we're referring to. All right. And of course, that could come right down here. All right. So how many shapes are we doing? Two. What is the volume of a pyramid? Who remembers from last week what the formula is? Oh, one third. Yes, sir. One third base times height. All right, Luca, what's the area of the base? How would I find that? And then what's the height of the pyramid? Very, very good. Beautiful. And so the volume of the pyramid was what? Say it again. Point what? 13 times 13 divided by 3. 13 times 13 times 13 divided by 3. What is that? 732 Yeah, so 732 and one third cubic feet. Is that what you're telling me? All right, so I think you just forgot to divide by three, whoever told me that, okay? So now that's volume number one. Volume number two, how do I find the volume of the other shape? Yes, because it's a cube, you could say 13 to the third power. And then that 13 to the third power was what? Do I agree with 2197? And then that would be cubic feet. So then all together, what are we looking at? You may else get that besides Luca. Remember, you're adding what? You're adding the 732 and the 2,197. And again, if you put one third, I'd probably be happier. 
two nine two nine one third cubic feet. Is that correct? Tell me. Did you add these two? You're adding this and this. Add those two up. Jolie, is that good? Reese, you okay? Avery, how are you doing, kiddo? Okay. Now, is there anything on there you want me to review with you as far as the formula goes, Avery? You good? If you're not some understanding, you would tell me. That's what I want you to. No, it's just, I, I, just I know, I know. It's okay. All right, keep trying. Keep writing things down. All right, any issues? All right, now what I did was I just wrote out some word problems. Everybody take a look at 16. A giant soccer ball has a diameter of 50 inches. Find the volume of the soccer ball, round to the nearest 10. Then find out how long it will take the ball to deflate if it leaks at a rate of 100 cubic inches per hour. Jackson, listen, I, I'm, I, for some reason, I just keep looking back and, and I'm not sure what you're doing. So now someone's got to remind me what's the volume of a ball? Not even close. Tell him. Oh, so close. Four thirds. Four thirds, then what? Four thirds pi r cubed. Now it says that the diameter is 50. So if the diameter is 50, that means the radius is 25. So I need everybody on your calculator now. Volume equals four thirds pi times 25 to the third power. And I need that rounded to three decimal places. All right. I got a. Uh, I'm listening, Tyler. Yeah. Um, 65,149.846. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, so that would be cubic inches. All right. So that's a lot. All right, that's a lot. Now, the next part is everybody, come on now. How long will it take the ball to deflate if it leaks at a rate of 100 cubic inches per hour? So let's say there gets a hole in the ball. All right. And it's leaking at 100 cubic inches per hour. How many hours is it going to take to deflate? What do you think? How did you do that? Yes, exactly. Very good. So we just took this out and we divide this by 100, right? And so we could say that that's about 654.5 hours. Six hundred and fifty four point five hours. Molly, how are you doing back there? And if you divide that by 24, that'll tell you the number of days. Avery, are you OK with that one? OK. All right, that's a good word problem right there, guys. Oh, we've got lots of word problems now. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at 17. So it says the Great Pyramid in Khufu, Egypt, has a square base measuring 756 or 756 feet on the side and has a height of 481 feet. The stones used to build the pyramid were limestone, an average uh, volume of 40 cubic feet. How many blocks were used? All right, so we have to calculate the volume. All right, so everybody knows what a volume is. 
right? And I'm gonna draw the shape just to make sure. I'm trying to find, yeah, so this could be something similar to that. So if you want, you can draw this out. This can be our pyramid. So I want everybody to be able to see it. All right, there's our pyramid. All right. Now it's a square base. So now put in the dimensions of the base, which is what? Thank you. And that would be 756. And what did they say the height was? Yep, 481. So now what's the formula for volume of a pyramid? Not one half, but one third. One third area of the base times the height. One third times 756 times 756 times 481. So tell me what that volume is. Like that? Anybody else get that big number? And that would be cubic feet. Come on now, everybody's got to type that in the calculator. That's part of doing it. So that's how many cubic feet there are in that pyramid. But they also said that each block or each stone was 40 cubic feet. So how do I determine how many stones were used? Yep, divide by 40. Good job, kiddo. Divide by 40. So there were stones, approximately how many stones? Point what? Oh. So we say there's approximately 2,290,907 stones. That's a lot of stones. All right, anybody have any questions with that? All right, that was good, guys, that you need to divide that right off the bat. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video. I want everybody to try on your own. Okay, so now for uh, the soup, remember pi r squared, it's a cylinder. So the cylinder area of the base. Now remember the base is a circle. So it's pi r squared times h. This right here, pi r squared times h, that is the cylinder. And then the times 12, because there were what? 12 cans. All right, that's all. So now let's see, we all should agree then that that volume is approximately and then inches cubed. What is it? Two, six, seven. I don't care. Three decimal places. Is that right? Five, seven, seven points. Is that correct now? All right. If you got that, honestly, you're, you're, you're doing pretty good. All right. You have to remember, you got to remember the shape though. Remember the shape. Yes. Say it again. Hey, I can't hear her. Oh, yeah, this is the volume. Ooh, I might, I might, I might, but I think you should be practicing writing them down. Also, you know what I'm saying? I really want you to try to try to learn them. All right, I haven't decided. You ask me again tomorrow, okay?
All right, I haven't decided. I feel like we've been doing it long enough. You should be getting there. All right, so here we go. All right, now on number 19, we're finally gonna work backwards a little bit. All right. So the volume of this rectangular prism is 120 cubic feet. So volume equals area of the base times the height. All right, now everybody's writing that down for me because this is the thing I left off of the last test. All right, yes. That's like what we're looking for. It's the, it's the height of the prism, right? Because let me explain why, just to make sure. This right here is the area of the base. You with me? So can you tell me what the area of that base is? What is it? 30, that is correct. So all you're doing is you're taking the volume, which we said was 120, and then the area of the base you just told me was what? 30, and now we're calculating what the height is. And, and again, I, I made it deliberately kind of easy just so you could see it, right? Does that make sense now? All right, so we're dividing it by 30. So the height would be for what though? Four feet. And the reason why we say it's four feet is because remember a height is a single unit. Area is squares and volume is cubes. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now I want everybody to take a look at number 20. Number 20 is very similar. All right, 20 is very similar. Again, volume, I want everybody to write this down, volume equals area of the base times the height. But in this case, the base shape is what? A triangle. So I need everybody to write V equals, what's the formula for area of a triangle? Right, we shouldn't have to think about that too much. One half base times height times capital H. But in this case, can I look at the figure and tell me what capital H, what letter is they, are they representing it with? X. X, right. So let's erase this capital H and just put X down. Now, someone tell me what's the base and height of the triangle? And what's the volume? 884 equals one half times eight, times 13, times X. Now I need someone to tell me what one half of eight times 13 is. Is that right, 52? So now I want 884 equals 52 X. And then we just divide by 52. And so it's what? 17 what? Yes, 17 inches. All right, I feel pretty good about that. All right, what time's the bell ring? 17, okay, so we got time. All right, now I need everybody to try to calculate that volume. All right, and, and again, that should be just simple, simple, simple. All right, calculate the volume. What is that shape called? Rectangular prism. So what do you do with the three numbers? Just multiply them. Come on, that wasn't that bad. Molly, do you agree with that? So what is it? 192 what? Centimeters cubed. All right, 192 centimeters cubed. All right, so let's take a look at 22. 
What's that shape? What's the formula for volume of a cylinder, guys? Pi what? Times? Good job. Pi r squared times h. Wait a minute, I need to know what the radius is first. And what's the height? Beautiful. Three decimal places. Anybody else get that? Any issues? Okay, here we go. Volume and surface area. Okay, so we already did review today volume of a sphere. What's volume formula? Right, now we know it's cubed because it's three dimensions. So that's how I try to remind kids. But surface area is how many dimensions? Two, area is two dimensions. That, that's how we know the radius is going to be what? Squared. So surface area is four pi r squared. Those are the two formulas you need. All right, so everybody knock out 23 and 24. Now you have to find both of those. All right, find both of those. So we're gonna put that down here and put this over here. Yeah, you have to find the surface area. I'm gonna pause the video. All right, everybody take a look now and see if you got the same thing. All right, volume here is 904. Surface area is here. Didn't get which one. All right, so four thirds, let's double check this please, I like that. Four, four divided by three times pi times six, and then the caret three equals. You got it now? All right, that's all that matters. Molly, how are you doing, kiddo? You all right with that? Jolie, I know you're doing good. Hey, Avery, are you okay? Boys, Zeb, did you do that on your calculator? All right, so now I'm scrolling over to question 24. I want both answers now. All right, 24. The difference here is what? We have the radius and not the diameter. So I need a volunteer for the volume and a volunteer for surface area. Jolie, volume. And then that was centimeters cubed. All right. Tyler, surface area. I don't care about the rounding. Y'all know that. Okay, now you're supposed to tell me, Molly, if you have a problem. Is that good? You got it? Not hard. Not difficult. Avery, are you okay, kiddo? Avery, you sure? Are you sure you're okay? All right. Okay, we got two more to go to finish up so you don't have any homework. Okay, now I really like number 25. Does anybody remember that story about Eureka, the famous scientist? They couldn't figure out the volume. And then he got into his bathtub and he realized the height of the bathtub, what? Moved when he got in. So he was able to calculate his volume based on the movement of the tub of water. All right. So before we didn't have the ability to calculate volume of irregular shapes. Now we can calculate the volume of irregular shapes by submerging it in water. And when the water moves, we calculate how much the water moved and that will tell us the volume of the shape that was dumped into the water. Does everybody agree with that? Does everybody understand what I'm saying, right? Think about it, you have a, some water, you put something in the water, the height goes up. It goes up exactly the volume of the shape that you put in. Does everybody, does everybody understand that? All right. So here we go. 
So you completely submerge a solid object in a rectangular tank that's 40 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Right, so let's draw that. All right, and it might be easier for me to just draw the tank. All right, let me find a good tank. Here, here will be my tank. All right. Now, just to show you exactly what I mean, all right, I'm going to place this tank right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe things out that I don't really care about. So this right here, this right here. Now, I really want you to pay attention because I think this is important. All right. So it's 30 by 40. Does everybody agree? So I'm going to put 30 centimeters here. And I'm going to put 40 centimeters here. All right. Now I filled it up to 20 centimeters. So right now, there's that much water in here. All right, so that's how much water is in my tank. Then what I do is I drop or I submerge something. All right, I put an object in, and now all of a sudden the water rises this level. The water rises, how much does the water rise? How many? No, it goes up 0.25 centimeters. So this right here changes by 0.25 centimeters. So that means, now again, please watch so you can see the demonstration, make sure you're understanding me. That means all of this right here is the volume of the thing that we dropped in the water. Does everybody agree with that? All right. So that volume is going to be 30 times 40 times the change, which is 0.25. And how much is that? 300 what? That's correct. 300 centimeters cubed. All right. That's a good problem right there. All right. Now I have one minute, so we got to go. Come on. Find the volume of the ramp. What shape is that? Triangular prism. So volume equals area of the base times the height. So what's the base shape again? So one half, little b, little h, capital H. Volume equals, what's the base and height of the triangle? Three and six, what's the height of the prism? 10. Calculate that volume. How much? 90 cubic feet, which was H. Believe it or not, that's a high school test, right? Question right there. Hard to believe. Yes. Um, 25, 300. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it is 300 because you did 30 times 40 times 0.25. Do you agree with me on this? All right, guys. I'm pretty happy with you today. All right, tomorrow we're going to have review number two.